Hi everyone, this is Lily here on the Trans Girl CNC where we talk about comics, cartoons, and other awesome nerd shit. So, today, if you can't tell by my shirt or if you didn't read the title, we're talking about Wonder Woman. Specifically, Wonder Woman of 77 meets the Bionic Woman. It's an interesting book, so we'll talk about that here in a second. Um, I do want to apologize for the updating schedule. It's been kind of thrown out of the whack, but I hopefully, uh, after today, it's going to be totally back in sync and will be totally cool and ready to go here in the near future with getting those videos out there on time. It's just been weird. So, you know, apologies, apologies, but hopefully everything's a okay. Thanks for sticking with me. If you're still sticking with me, if you left, you're not watching, so it doesn't matter, I suppose. <laughs> Okay, huh. before we talk about Wonder Woman, uh, we're actually going to talk about another awesome female icon just in our Things You Might Have Missed segment. If you've never seen this before, this is where I suggest something to you that maybe you're not reading or watching because of whatever reason that I still think you should check it out. So, what are we talking about? We're talking about from Dynamite, Xena, Warrior Princess. Beep, 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 beep. Mew. Um, this is is basically the story of how Xena becomes, well, a Xena, more or less. Uh, it's her first meeting of Gabriella. After she's done doing stuff with Hercules, like, it's basically not exactly her origin story, but it is kind of more or less how she becomes a great hero where she started out as, like, a bandit. And it's supposed to be super queer. I like this cover specifically. Boo. Yeah! Um, which hopefully it is, um, because they did cancel the show that was supposed to explore the feelings between Xena and Gabriella for whatever reason, and so I hope it gets to do that in the comic, so check it out from Dynamite Xena. Now, the thing we're talking about today is also from Dynamite, it's actually from Dynamite and DC, uh, let's talk about Wonder Woman of 77 meets the Bionic Woman, and let's, let's talk. Which... I mean, that's kind of a sign. I don't know if that's a good or bad sign, the way that I uh, introduced that, but I want to kind of preface this with saying that I did not grow up with Linda Carter's Wonder Woman. I've actually never seen the Bionic Woman. Like, so why did I get this? Because I had heard such great things from people who had um, about both the... Uh, TV series and how neat and awesome they were, and what female icons, and I'm not saying that they're not, uh, but this is definitely taking place in the 70s, obviously, and so things were different then than they are now, and so some of it's really, really weird. I guess that's just the way to put it. It's not good, it's not bad, it's just weird. I'm not, I mean, the comic itself is okay, but some of the themes are just, ooh, they're weird. So, yeah, yeah. Sorry, hair in the face. For people who did grow up with those things, I'm sure this comic is right up your alley. It's six issues, but those came out last year. In October, a full graphic novel of all these issues came out, so you can definitely check it out that way. I'm totally suggesting that if you're interested, do so. But if you're used to modern woman, Wonder Woman... <laughs> The way that I'm used to Modern Wonder Woman, you know, I started reading comics in the 90s and through the 2000s, so, um, my view on comics is ever-evolving and ever-changing, but I didn't grow up with that particular older Wonder Woman stuff, and so for me, and for people I suppose like me, uh, it's kind of weird. Like, I can see why I continue to have disagreements with people who are used to about Wonder Woman's powers, what she could do, how they were made, or how she functions, because they were working off an older set of knowledge, which is no longer a part of the canon. And honestly, I feel like even with this, they could have maybe nullified the canon just, just a little bit, but the things that they would have had to nullify to make me comfortable would have actually, uh, well, they made that the plot, so... That's kind of what it centers on. So, if you didn't know, Wonder Woman's bracelets, where she uses, you know, black bullets to flex, you know, all kinds of manners of thing because she's, like, awesome as hell. Um, they are enchanted by the gods. At least that's how the canon works now. 
and I like that canon. That canon works great. But in the older canon, it's because they're made out of a super indestructible material called phenomum. Is how I guess you pronounce that. It's like fem unum. So kind of like any other alloy, but with fem in front of it. And it's badly named. Badly. But it's what it is. I wouldn't have used it again, but hey. They're doing what they can for, you know, the people who wanted to read this. And it's not that I didn't want to read this. I guess I just went into this without the proper knowledge to make this more comfy for me. So, yeah. Excluding that, it's okay. I mean, I could have done without her um, sea diving costume. That was weird. Like, she's got a costume for every occasion, this Wonder Woman. Which is kind of cool, but also, like, meh. Like, because I feel like her armor is just perfect. It's fine. Anyhow, let's move on from that. Now, the Bionic Woman, she's super cool. I, I've never, you know, been uh, exposed to her in any kind of way. So for me, that was all fresh and neat. And I really enjoyed it. I actually kind of enjoyed her presence a little more than Wonder Woman. Maybe because of that. Maybe because it was just not as weird. Um, she's got a bionic ear, and a bionic arm, and bionic legs for kicking and stuff. I really, the things I've seen of the Six Million Dollar Man and Bionic Woman is all like the slow motion scenes with like, and it has those effects in the comics. Like, that's perfect. That's really all I wanted, so. So, is this a good comic to get? <clears throat> I would say that... It's an interesting comic to get. You should totally check it out if you're a fan of both these things. And maybe not if you're a fan of just one or the other kind of thing. The plot of the comic revolves around a terrorist organization that every branch of military is being, of government is being called in for it, including the branches that uh, Diana Prince works for, Wonder Woman, and that Bionic Woman works for, and they kind of pair these two together. Now, nobody knows that Diana Prince is Wonder Woman. Of course, it's her secret identity, because every superhero has to have a secret identity. That's just a thing. I'm not complaining about it. But, of course, the Bionic Woman sees through Diana's get up, knows who she is. Like, I'm not going to go too deep into this because you might want to read this. I'm just saying, I'm kind of giving you the broad strokes. But the plot is that all the villains who ever built robots to fight against Wonder Woman or the Bionic Woman have now teamed up. And they've also teamed up with a Nazi. The Nazi guy's weird. Like, he is like got information about the mascara because he had once visited there and the, br the brain wipe didn't go as planned. So he still has kind of the knowledge and the idea is to go to Femascara, Femascara and <laughs> mine the Phenomen, the Phenomen, the, 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 the special ore that is made, makes up Wonder Woman's bracelets and makes them indestructible. And they're going to take over Themyscira and they're going to mine it. And they're going to do it with an army of Fembots. Why are they Fembots? Because it's the 70s. Um, that's, that's what it is. They're like big villains for the Bionic Woman and that's cool. But are they built by a dude who was partners with the guy who made the Six Million Dollar Man and the Bionic Woman, or at least the Bionics for them, and he decided to make fully autonomous robots called Fembots, although sometimes they're men, but they're still called Fembots. It's, it's weird. But that's the plot. The plot is to go to the mascara, get the special alloy, make Fembots out of this special alloy, and then uh, take over the world. It's a very very basic uh, villain plot. And I actually kind of like that a little bit. I like that it's just a simple, we're here to take this special thing to take over the world. Yep, that's what we're going to do. Now, <clears throat> the comic itself is ripe with sexism from the 70s because that's just the way it was. 
Like, not necessarily from Diana or the Bionic Woman herself, but people who interact with her, especially the Nazi guy. Like, he is, like... The worst. I don't mind telling you that he dies. He totally dies. He could have been saved, but he's like, I won't take help from a woman. And plummets to his death. It's the weirdest thing. Or it's the thing that should have happened. I don't know. I'm not sad about his death. I don't even feel bad about it or any kind of way about it. I'm just glad. Well, I guess I'm kind of glad that a Nazi is dead in any form of media. So, yeah. But, yeah, that's... I don't know what else to really say about it other than that's the plot. That's where I was going. The heroes win because it's just that. And it gets revealed that there's a person behind the curtain sort of pulling the strings of the other villains. And then the comic ends, which... I feel like they wanted to do more. I feel like they wanted to make more Wonder Woman and Bionic Woman comics because it seemed like a cool thing to do. It's not a bad concept, but I don't think it's sold enough or maybe it just didn't hit the nostalgia point enough for people for there to be a continuation to go into this other villain that was behind the scenes. So that feels like a wasted plot thread. Like, or maybe it continued in some other comic that I didn't see. Maybe there was a Bionic Woman comic that I'm not reading, possible, um, where that plot thread continues. I don't know. It just feels lost. It feels lost on me. So that's really all I have to say about the comic. It's weird. It's okay. I, I kind of like it, but it definitely has its problems. On a scale of 1 to 10, I'd give it about a 6.5. You know, still readable, still enjoyable. Glad I got it. Anyway, yep, that's it. That's today's video. So, what are we talking about next time? Go, go, Power Rangers. Especially since Shattered Grid just came out, and it's really cool. But we probably won't talk about Shattered Grid too much. Anyway, I'm Fire Princess Lily. This has been Fire... This has been Trans Girl CNC. Uh, and until next time, love comics, love cartoons, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!